able to put together Augustinian and Thomistic theologies brought about by the studies done by both bishops and theologians. And what came out is the title, Mystery. That the church is sacrament, a visible sign of an invincible reality, and a sacrament that affects what it signifies. Kaya nga sacrament eh, causality. What does it affect? Unity. What does it affect? Communion. That's very basic. Chapter 1 is very important. Number 2 is this. That the church is people of God. A messianic people of God. Why? Because they were able to get the source of the letter or the writings of the apostle Barnabas that talks about the church as the new Israel. That this people of God has a threefold office. And the threefold office is that this people of God is priestly, prophetic, and kingly. Tama? We're reviewing. My brothers in the priesthood know this. This is fundamental ecclesiology. Now, let's go to each of them. Why are we priestly? Is it cultic? No. We are priestly because of our way of life. Because the way of life of the priest is holiness. Because the way of life of the priest is orderly. That's priestly. We are priestly because we are mediator between God and people. Priestly life is holy life, orderly life. Only second is cultic life, prayer life. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart. That is why in that priestly people, that is why we can call it the priesthood of the faithful. Please don't call it priesthood of the laity. That is wrong. The priesthood of the faithful. It is from the priesthood of the faithful where the ordained ministry is. Why? Because there is only one priesthood. It is the priesthood of Christ, of which we share that priesthood by virtue of baptism. Tandaan ang mga phrases. One priesthood of Christ, priesthood of the faithful, and ministerial priesthood of which in history has been called bishop, presbyter, deacon. <coughs> We're just doing catechesis here. Huh? Very important. I'm just voice echoing to you what the document is saying. If you want to add fathers, please raise your hand to enrich our discussion. Huh? Priesthood is holiness. Banal. Number two, prophetic. Because it speaks of the word. Because the word has power. Has power to transform. Transform one's life and transform the lives of the people. A prophet does not simply forecast the future. No! The prophet is one who is rooted in the realities of the people, of which the prophet is also a mystic. Because the prophet must gaze on the face of God before he proclaims the word. Mahalaga yun. Alam nyo, we have to uncover that. You know what? A prophet is also a mystic. Because the mystic gazes on the face of God. Why? Because the primary responsibility of the mystic is contemplation. Therefore, you cannot speak the word if you have not received the word. And what else? The prophet is one who presents an alternative consciousness and perception that is against the predominant culture of a given society. 
You know who said that? A theologian, Walter Brueggemann. <coughs> Walter Brueggemann presents to us the alternative consciousness. The prophet is always, if you study the Bible, no? Kailan lumabas ang mga propeta? Nung may mga hari. Nung walang hari, walang propeta. Tama? During the time of judges, wala yan. Lumabas ang mga propeta. Uh, check mo ako, ha? Doctor Nati, ganito ang sinasabi sa akin. Ang Old Testament namin si Raymond Brown, eh. Ang sabi niya, you know why? Because the kings symbolize the second covenant, which is the Davidic Zion covenant. The prophets needed to remind the kings about the primary covenant, which is the Mosaic Sinai covenant. I will be your God, you will be my people. And the prophets need to put the kings in their place. Go back to the primary covenant. Because there are two major covenants in the Old Testament. What are they? Mosaic Sinai, I will be your God, you will be my people. And the Davidic Zion Covenant, your house will live forever, David. It is from you that the Messiah will be born. That is why Davidic, the Davidic dynasty continues. And that is why the fulfillment of the Davidic dynasty is in Jesus of Nazareth. But please take note, all the kings were all evil. Walang matino. And that's the beauty of the Matthean genealogy. It only shows to us that indeed God works even in the darkness of the sinfulness of the messianic tribe. And his name is Emmanuel. What does that mean? That we are prophets engaged in the word. Number three, that we are kings because it speaks of power and the power is always for service. All power in the world is for service. We are kings, not because we hold the scepter or the crown. We are kings because we are called to serve. Because power is for service. Now, take note. Development. Pagpatikan to na. Dumen Gensio. Anong development? Development is this. 20 years after this, John Paul II gathered to review Vatican II. And what came out is the new model. The new model in which he put together sacramentum and people of God. The new model, which was assisted by Ratzinger as doctrine of the faith, is communio. Communio synthesized Mosterion, Sacramento, and people of God. That is why Bruno Forte has a monumental work, Church, Icon of the Trinity. Icona de la Trinita. That we image the Trion God. So now the fundamental model of Vatican II's ecclesiology is communion. Tama-tama naman for this year. Communion. Now, I'd like you to hold there because later, after the break, PCP2 will pick this up. Community of the Disciples of Christ. But communion, because, why? Because we image the Trinity. Because in the Trinity, we see the mystery of the church. Okay, look at this diagram. There is one God, three persons. Father is God. Son is God. Holy Spirit is God. The fullness of divinity is in the Father. The fullness of divinity is the Son. Hindi one-third, one-third, one-third. Huwag yung takali ng divinity. The fullness of divinity is in the Father. It is also in the Son. It is also in the Holy Spirit. But there is one God. Now, the Father 
is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father. This is what we call, the fathers will help me, immanent and economic trinity. Theology neon. Immanent. What does that mean? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Three divine persons. Kaya, Pedro Sevilla, the late Pedro Sevilla, translates it as Dios na sang tatlo. Dios na sang tatlo. Very strong yan sa theology niya sa LST at sa St. Alphonsus Regional Seminary sa Lucena. Very strong. Dios na sang tatlo. Isang Dios tatlong persona. At yon ang ating isinasalamin. Bakit? Sapagat ang panawagan sa simbahan ay pagkakaisa. At ang pagkakaisa natin ay mararamdaman sa pagbalang ng pagkakaiba-iba. Unity in diversity. That in this church, the more we respect diversity, the more we are enriched as a church. There are different offices, there are different gifts, because you cannot contain the giftedness of the triune God. Because love is borderless. <coughs> because God is love. You know, Hans Urs Cardinal Baltasar, oh, I like his theology. Sabi niya, or all theology can be summarized into three statements. O pwede kang gumawa ng retreat. Number one, God is love. Number two, God loves us. Number three, we must love one another. Period. <laughs> ano nung pa mga tinuturo nyo, sabi ni Cardinal Baltasar. Simple. God is love. God loves us. We must love one another. Tama? Ayun na. Yun na yung training ng catechist. Yun na yung grades 1 to 3, 4 to 6, at grades 7 to 12. Labas doon ang social ethics pag we must love one another. Labas doon ang sexual ethics. Labas din naman doon ang building of communion, of communities, of engagement in parishes. God loves us. Huh? You know, the simpler the concepts, the better. Because God is simple. Huh? So, communion is this. So, what concepts are here? There is a call to unity in diversity, participation, and co-responsibility, and love that reaches out. Love that reaches out. And when you say love reaches out, that's, that's a simple definition of mission. Mission is what? Love reaching out. May mission ka? Pag-ibig? Naniyaya ka pang mundo? Sabi ng isang santo, let your hearts be as big as His so that the whole world may find room in it. Ang ganda, no? Let your hearts be as big as His so that the whole world may find room in it. Sinabi ni Luis de Meister, si Saint Eugenie ng Assumption, sabi niya, The world is too small for my love. <coughs> Alam mo yung mga madre, maganda yung mga pinagsasi sabi nila. No? <laughs> May mga hugot, mga hugot lines, no? Sister Nora, no? <laughs> the world is too small for my love. Oh, ganda. Who said that? Saint Eugenie. Eugenie, the foundress of the religious of the Assumption. <coughs> Love. And these are what we call the marks. So, there is a development of theology in Lumen Gentium from mystery and people of God to. Magdi develop pa yan later sa PCP2. May dadagdag sila. Communion of disciples. 
of Christ, which means discipleship. We'll talk about that when we go to PCP2. Okay, let me stop there. Questions regarding Lumen Gentium? The rest will follow, as in chapters 3, 4, 5, 6, about the hierarchy, about the religious, tama? about the laity, tama? about the pilgrim church, at ang pinakahuli, on the Blessed Virgin Mary. Nagdebate pa ang 2,500 bishops sa council floor kasi ang mga Spanish-speaking bishops at Filipino bishops led by Cardinal Santos wanted to have a separate document on the Blessed Virgin Mary. So, Paul VI said, All right, debate in the council floor. I appoint Cardinal Santos of Manila to defend the separate document. And I appoint Cardinal Koenig of Vienna, Austria to defend the inclusion of the Blessed Mother in the Ecclesia document. The debate started. And both of them spoke in the council floor in impeccable Latin. <laughs> Santos spoke in Latin. So, makum laudin naman si Santos eh. Sa Gregorian. And there was a vote. The vote, 44 lang ang margin. At nalalo, include the Blessed Mother in Lumen Gentium, chapter 8. <coughs> That's just a history. Later on, Paul VI was motivated to do two things. Number one, on December 8th, for the six, declared Mary, Mother Ecclesia, Mother of the Church. And number two, wrote three years after, Marialis Cultus. Ang mga Filipino bishops sumulan, ang mahal na birhen, pastoral letter of the Filipino bishops. Strong Mariology ang Filipino talaga. Basta kay Maria, nako, talagang... Labas talaga. Talagang pag-mary sa atin. No? Ha? Sa north, sinong Maria? Pia. Central Luzon? Manawa. Lakas ng kita ng Manawa. <laughs> pag talaga ako'y dumadaan doon eh. Ako nagtuturo sa San Fabian. Lagi akong dadaan para mag-hello sa mahal na ina. Abay, laging umaagos ang tao doon. Talagang sabi ko, talagang from all walks of life, from all regions, they go to the feet of Our Lady. No? Pag dito na sa Maynila, Lanaval. Tama? Mary Help of Christians sa Paranaque. Baclaran. Perpetual Hell. Sampa. Immaculata Conception. Malabon, Pasi. Tama? Oh, uh, sa ano? Sa... Antipolo, Peña Francia, sa Bicol, at sa Southern Tagalog. Yan, di pa ako katahin ang katuo. Katahin ang katuo. Katahin ang katuo tayo. Roma Lukuta, Causa Finita. Yan, dahimik na tayo. Okay, saka na yun. Sabi ng kardinal, hindi kailangan ng mahal na ina ang tulong. Hayaan ninyo, kung gusto niya, may mangyayari pa rin. Masyado kayo maasikaso. Apurato pa kayo. Nandahan. Ang paggalaw, tinan niyo yung dalawang obispo, Bersosa at Obiar. Nung sinabi ng Roma, tama na, abay tama na, hanggang sa sila ay mamatay. Ito <laughs> naman si Bishop Lagdabi, sabi ko, Bishop, natanong niyo ba, hindi ba sekretary yan ni Obiar? Natanong niyo ba kung talagang totoo? Ay, nung nag namamatay na, two days before na nung ko, eh, Excellency, totoo ba? Tumingin daw sa kanya, totoo. Kaya <laughs> tahimik, ay naku, inaano mo ko ha. <laughs> but Rome has spoken in 58. So that's okay. Kasi ang sa akin din naman, it might affect the beatification of these two holy bishops. Eh. Taba, ang mabilis ngayon, ang Cebu. Yeah. Kamomot. Naghihimala ang kamomot. 
<laughs> Di ba, sister? Naghihimala. Nagbabailocate daw yun. Ah, makikita nagkukumpil sa siyudad ng Cebu, tapos nagpa-pastoral visit sa bundok ng Cebu. Hmm. Nung, nung hinold up, ha? pinuha lahat ng pera, sabi, halika rito, bumalik ka. Bakit ho? Nakalimutang sing-sing ko. Ito, <laughs> baka kailangan mong ano yan. Holy bishops. Huh? We have holy bishops. Up to now, we have holy bishops. We have holy priests. Kaya sinasabi nila, natungkol sa mga pare ng bispo, I disagree. We have more holy priests and a lot more who are faithful to the call. And they're quietly doing their ministry without attention. Komunyo. Next. Punta na tayo. 15 minutes na lang, ha? Okay ba? Kaya pa? Kaya pa? Kaya. Punta na tayo sa Sacrosancto Concilio. Ito dapat si Jenny, eh. Pero masukang, may masukang po na. In Sacramentum, Sacrosancto Concilio, there are three principles of liturgical renewal identified by the Council. Number one, First is the commemor memorial of the Paschal Mystery. That's the first principle. That all liturgical events and liturgical celebrations should bring us back to the Paschal Mystery. Number two, the proclamation of the Word. That no liturgical celebration can be done without the Word. And number three, that the lit liturgy is the epiphany of the church. That when we celebrate liturgy, we become truly one, holy, Catholic, apostolic. Take note, brothers and sisters, these are the three principles identified by John Paul II in Vicesimus Quintus Annus, celebrating the 20 years of of the Second Vatican Council's Sacrosanctum Concilio. If there are three principles that our catechists need to study and learn in the appreciation of the liturgy, these three principles need to be deepened. Number one, let's go. Memorial of the Paschal Mystery. Actually, I have to be honest with you, mahina ang salitang memorial. Gagamitin ko ang Monsignor Luigi Balquietra ng Lucena, na isinalin niya ang salitang memorial sa pagsasangayon ng misteryo paskwal. Pagsasangayon. Why? Ganito ang sabi niya. Ganito. Sa Diyos, walang kahapon at bukas. Lagi ngayon. Because God is timeless. Tama? When we celebrate the Mass, we are not simply repeating what happened in the past. We are entering into the space of God, which is eternity. And in the space of God, the Paschal Mystery is a never forever unending celebration of God's Passover. That's by Pietra. May isang theology lang talaga na hindi ko makakalimutan kay Balkedra. Because he stayed with me in the parish. Yan ang salita, Jerry, na wag na wag mong makakalimutan. Pagsasangayon, na hindi maisasalin sa Ingles, pero mas maintindihan ang mga Pilipino. Pagsasangayon ng misteryo paskwal. Lumalabas lang, hindi mo inuulit. Kasi wala naman. Laban yun sa letter to the Hebrews. Tama? There is only one sacrifice, once and for all. So when we celebrate Mass, are we duplicating? No. We celebrate. We don't even use the word once again. We celebrate in the here and now the sacrifice of Jesus on Calvary. We enter the space of God where there is neither past or future because it is timeless. We enter eternity. 
when you look at that, if you look into the spirituality, huh? the catechism must be convinced that when they prepare the liturgy, they enter the space of God. Because you cannot give what you do not have. What does that mean? Our catechists must be people of contemplation. <coughs> they must always pray every day. They must always seek God. And their love for the Blessed Sacrament must be unquestioned. Ako, napakahalaga niya. Or else we become noisy gongs. Clanging symbols. The heart is simply that we have seen the Lord and we seek His presence. That's the Paschal mystery. And the Paschal mystery is none other than His passion, death, and resurrection. You know, PCP2 would call this, take note, baka makalimutan ko. PCP2 would call the Paschal mystery a dangerous memory. <laughs> a dangerous memory? Why? Because when people live the Paschal Mystery, they become a dangerous person that they will be subjected to persecution because their values will run counter to the predominant values of society. They will be martyred because our Lord was a victim of powerful men. Kaya ginamit ng PCP2, actually ang nagpasok noong PCP, ang uh, word na yung phrase, ay si Quevedo, Bacani, at Claver. Sila ang sumulat ng PCP2 document. Yun ang tatlong evangelist, sana ang PCP2. Quevedo, Bacani, Claver. Que bakla. <laughs> Nung pag inaano kami, kasi nandun ako sa, sa ano, sa, sa inapoint ako ni Archbishop Cruz at ni Archbishop de Gaspi, you be the one to go around the dioceses after PCP2. We will pull you out of San Carlos. We have requested Cardinal Sin to allow you to work in CBCP. Your work, Jerry, is that you go around from north to south. Go to all dioceses, congregations, and communities. Okay? Nag-echo. Nag-echo. Yung trabaho, echo. So when I'm going back to the documents, preparing the lesson plan, the lessons, no? Sabi ko, eh, sino ba sumulat ito? Sino sumulat niya? Sabi, you go to Kebakla. Sabi ko si Oscar, ano yung Kebakla? Ano yung Kebakla? Kebedo, Makani, Klaver. Ah, okay. Kebakla. Parang mas pakinggan. Baka sabi mo, Bishop, Ke. Kebedo. But if you if you go back once again to Cardinal Kebedo, no? You you go, you listen to him. He always goes back to PCP2. Tama? Baka ni, PCP2. Ay si Klaver, nasa langit na. But these are the evangelists of PCP2. Okay? Dangerous. So, Pascal mystery is dangerous. Okay? Ayan na, three principles. Sa Crusantum Concilio. Maybe in the next year when you undergo the second part of this, we should invite the liturgies to deepen liturgical life. Tama? Maganda, pag-aralan nito. Dahil mga sacramento. Sacramental or mystagogical catechesis. Okay? Okay na? Kapagod. <laughs> Any questions, comments, additions, fathers, sisters? Maninaw? Maninaw. 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 Ang day verbum, hindi ko naman pakihimasukan. Yan ay aanuhin ni uh, Dr. Nate. Ano na yung magbibiya ka na? Oo oh, nga yun. Day verbum to verbum domini. Alam mo, ang verbum domini in expand the Benedict, ang study of scriptures. Right? The word of God is not only scriptures. Sabi nga niya, very beautiful eh. The Word of God is found in culture, in arts, in entertainment. Yes, everything. And you see the beauty and how expansive the mind of Benedict is, no? In Verbum Domini. 
I think we should have a deeper study of verbum domini. No? You know who was very good? Our one, one retreat that we had as Manilenios, Manila clergy, was with uh, Pabilio. And he expounded for five days, verbum domini. You were teaching? Ah, okay. Dito, bukas siya? Oh, di ko na pangipasukan. Pagkatapos ko siya naman. 